Hi. This experiment will show how pressure varies in the discharge line of a uh, typical pump system um, or uh, let's say perhaps a bit more of an industrial uh, type than, uh, than you would see in a home environment. So what I have is a uh, small reservoir containing water, a centrifugal pump, a discharge line that is pumping fluid up into an upper reservoir, up over, and the reservoir itself is being drained back into the tank so I can recirculate the water. What I want to show you is how the pressure varies in this discharge line here, especially in this region here that's above uh, the level of the uh, upper tank. You see that it's quite surprising uh, what, uh, what we'll see in a second. What I'm going to do is install this three-way valve in this line here. Now this valve is, um, three, has three ways, three ways of channeling fluid and go straight from here to here, let the fluid go right by, or the fluid can come up into this uh, exit point here from this direction or from that direction. So if I want the fluid to go straight by, the valve will handle will be in this direction. If I want the fluid to come out through the uh, middle port, I will just rotate the handle for the fluid to come out in that direction. What this does is this can act as a pressure detector because if I have positive pressure uh, in the uh, discharge line, fluid will come out once the valve is properly positioned, the, uh, the middle port. If there's uh, no pressure, no fluid will come out, and if there's negative pressure or pressure below atmospheric pressure in the top part, then air will be sucked in. So this little valve can, interestingly enough, will act as our pressure detector for positive, zero, or negative, meaning less than atmospheric pressure. So my pump is running, everything is uh, more or less in equilibrium. I'm going to install the uh, pressure detector in this part of the line. So I'm going to use a connector here that will allow me to get from the uh, three valve back into the tank. and make sure the valve is closed for now and I'll start up the system again. Now, the position of this valve, and once I open it, of course, uh, so that fluid can either enter, or, or I mean, fluid can either exit or enter, will tell me what the pressure is in this position of the, uh, the discharge line. So for example, if I open the valve now, water's coming out as you can see. So this means that at this position in the system there is positive pressure. As I go up, you'll see that the, uh, the uh, flow in this uh, valve will start to diminish. We get to a certain point where there's, there's no flow, this point here. So at this point in the system, there's actually zero pressure on the line. If I keep going up higher, air will be sucked into the line, as you can hear now. And if I come back down, I'll put back to zero point pressure, and here back to positive pressure. So you can see that for a, uh, a uh, line with, uh, that comes into the top of a tank, there's pretty well always going to be a a part of that line that's under vacuum or has low atmospheric pressure. Now, further, the further interesting point here is the uh, position of, uh, of the uh, zero pressure occurs at a point a little bit higher than the, uh, the level in the upper tank. And that's due to the friction that's in the system. So if there were no friction, I would expect to see zero pressure at the same level as uh, the upper tank is here, and of course since there's always friction then there will be a difference, and that difference corresponds to the friction head. So there you have it. With this simple uh, little device here, this three-way valve, we're able to tell what the level of pressure is in the discharge line. And this could be useful to you to know because uh, if you're very much higher up 
before you get into your tank, your pressure might be low enough that the liquid that you're uh, transporting will vaporize. We know that if uh, pressure gets so very low, a uh, liquid can vaporize. And then we have uh, liquid in uh, vapor, and it's difficult for the pump to pump at the rate that we want. Also, imagine that if you're trying to put a connection here to another system because you need to distribute uh, this fluid to another uh, another area, well, of course, you will never be able to distribute because the low pressure here will mean that the fluid or air is sucked in from that other air instead of going to it. So if you want to distribute fluid to another area, you always need to be closer to the pump where you're sure you have positive pressure. Of course, uh, this detection method uh, is not something that you can use uh, in practice uh, in, a, uh, in an industry because obviously uh, all the piping is fixed. It's made of steel and not tubes and uh, there's no way you can move uh, such a device around. But the idea is to show uh, how pressure varies and to introduce the concept because most people just don't uh, realize that uh, there is a significant variation in pressure and you need, you need to know where it's likely to occur and what problems could be caused by that. So you can't do this physically but this type of uh, exercise can be done mentally so calculations can be done which will show exactly at what point do you hit zero pressure, at what point do you hit negative pressure, etc. So uh, that's it, and good luck.